James Bevan, Chief Investment Officer, CCLA Investment Management. What is you, James? How hopeful are you uh, that, that uh, a scheme is going to be launched successfully on Banking Union? Well, I'm sure that there will be a scheme eventually, but I think the problem is that we're still dealing with brinkmanship politics and brinkmanship central banking. And realistically, we've got 18 months of cash to support Euroland, and I fear that until there is yet another crisis, we're still going to find that progress is slow. How slow is it going to be? When, when, when will we see some, top, some sort of resolution, in your view? Do you know, I think it's going to be much slower than most people expect because there just isn't a great sense of urgency right now. As I say, the ECB has adequate cash to be going on with. It's not therefore squealing, and until it squeals, I just don't see enough pressure to push it over the line. Um, in, in terms of investment, I, in, 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 I've got your note, and you say the valuation case for genuine growth stories is compelling. Um, where, where is the growth? Do you know, I look at what's going on in Euroland, the UK and the US, and I see really very difficult trends. In contrast, in global emerging markets, these, I see outstanding GDP growth. And in particular, I see significant opportunities for consumer spending to rise. So I'm looking at companies like SAB Miller, Diageo and Swatch. Global emerging market consumer story, you say, remains compelling. Where, where, what do you like in particular in emerging markets? I like uh, basic consumer products. Uh, if I were to look at Colgate Palmolive as a Western indirect investment, I see a fantastic opportunity to buy very cheap exposure to the region. The same with BAT Industries. I equally think there is a great opportunity to take account of the changing demographics in emerging markets, therefore looking at companies that sell healthcare, a sector that is much unloved by investors at the moment. I would pick uh, companies like uh, Sanofi, Novartis, Novo Nordisk and Fresenius. It's companies extremely well placed to participate participate in the long-term trends that lie ahead. Are you wary of the US? Uh, I'm most definitely very worried about the US. I see lots of bad news coming down the line in terms of both the lead indicators for industrial manufacturing but also for consumption and there's been this big gap between what people have been spending what they've been earning and I think that's going to come home to roost next year. James, I want to f finish up with a story. Uh, it's a Thomson Reuters uh, survey, the top 100 global innovators. Um, it's been widely talked about because there is not a single UK company um, on this 100 list. Uh, it's, uh, there are American companies, Japanese companies, I think there's one German company, quite a few French companies. Does it surprise you there are no UK companies on this list? Well, I think it's absolutely desperate and it's a great survey. What it does is highlight the dependency that the UK built in recent years on speculative property and finance. And we have to go back to the root of British engineering, British entrepreneurship, British innovation and demonstrate that we can lead the world. We did and we can again.